Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and over the last couple of years, we've looked at the Mevo series of streaming cameras. These are very simple to use devices that pair up with a tablet or a phone and allow you to do some pretty compelling live streams with a minimal amount of hardware. One of the things that I've liked about them is that they can intelligently zoom and crop the image to make your live stream look a little more dynamic than just a static shot you might get with a smartphone on its own. And the folks from Logitech reached out to me to see if I might be able to do a tutorial about their multi-camera system that allows you to pair multiple cameras up to your phone or tablet and be able to physically switch between those cameras to get even more camera angles out of them. And what we're going to be doing in a whole series of videos is showing how you can set up productions very quickly and easily using three of these devices along with an iPad. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Logitech, and they also reviewed and approved this video before it was uploaded for accuracy. And now what we're going to do is get these cameras out of the box. We're going to configure them, pair them up with the iPad, and then we're going to set up a little test stream in my kitchen to see how one of these multi-camera productions might work. Let's get to it. So we're going to kick things off by unboxing the Mevo Start 3 pack that they sent over to me for this video. And inside are three Mevo Start cameras. And just to show you what these look like in case you missed my original review, these are self-contained. They have a battery inside that can go for up to six hours. Additionally, you can plug it into power with its USB Type-C port here. There's also ways to connect it to your Ethernet network, but in this video, we're going to connect over Wi-Fi, which of course is the simplest way to go about it. Now, in addition to working as a wireless streaming camera, these cameras can also record what they see simultaneously if you put an SD card into the SD card slot here at the bottom. And when your production is over with, you'll have three separate full length recordings that were captured from each of the camera's angles. And you can use that to edit together something different when your stream is over with. If you wanted to show a different angle of something, you'll have it recorded in its entirety. Up here, you have a microphone input and we'll cover using external microphones in an upcoming video. There are also microphones built into each camera that you can use for capturing audio. Now, as far as mounting is concerned, you can mount it to any camera tripod if you use the built-in adapter here at the bottom. If you unscrew this adapter and flip it over, this can fit on any standard microphone mount. The cameras weigh about 8.2 ounces or roughly 232 grams, so they're very lightweight and should be very easily mountable wherever you want to put them. Now, also in the box here, you will find charging cords for each of the cameras. This will have a USB Type-C on one end for plugging into that USB Type-C port, and the other end here terminates to a standard USB-A connector, which will work with any USB power supply. And you'll find that across the board here as we continue unboxing everything. You also have a little quick start guide that you'll find inside of this envelope. So what I'm gonna do now is get these cameras unwrapped and set up here on the desk, and we're going to get the app installed and get it all configured. And within a few minutes, we'll have three distinct camera angles ready to go for our production. Let's get to unwrapping. So our cameras are unwrapped and ready to go. I've got my iPad out now, which is going to act as our control device. The iPad works great for this because it has a larger screen, but it will also run on the iPhone and it will run on Android devices. So it's got a good amount of compatibility. You do have to pick the right app though for multi-camera operation. And that app is called the Logitech Mevo Multicam app, which is there on the right. You will also find the Logitech Mevo app, which is for single camera operation. But for this multi-camera experiment, we're going to need that multi-cam app. So let me get that app open and we'll get our cameras set up. Now, before we dive too much further into the app, I do want to turn on the cameras here. So we're going to hold down the power button and get each of them booted up. You do, of course, want to make sure you fully charge these things before you go out in the field with them. But I think there should be enough charge here to get these uh, configured here initially out of the box. And you can see each of them now is uh, looking for a pairing request. So we're going to jump into the app here and turn on each of the cameras as was instructed. We'll click on Next now. It will need permission to access devices on our local network, so we'll enable that. And then we also uh, need to allow it to know our location. 
and we also have to enable Bluetooth and notifications. Why not? We'll get them all going there. And we're going to click on next here and go through some of the instructions here. And so what we're going to do first is add a source and I'm going to go over to camera and we'll have it send some diagnostics over to them in case it finds anything awry as we're going through our process here. Now what you'll see is that we have three Mevo cameras available, which are all three of the cameras here on the desk. So there's not much to the setup process here. I'm just going to click on setup to get our first one going. Now in this video, we're going to say that we have a Wi-Fi network for simplicity. So this will assume that we've got a common router that the iPad and the cameras will all be connected to to communicate. But it's also possible to set up basically an ad hoc network while you're out in the field, but that will not be the subject of this video. We're going to go for a more simple installation here so you can get an idea of the process. So we'll say, yes, we have a Wi-Fi, and we'll move on to the next step here. And now what I'm gonna do is select my Wi-Fi network, which is the five gigahertz LSMO Wi-Fi access point. Now your Wi-Fi access point will have a different name than mine, of course, but I do recommend connecting to a five gigahertz Wi-Fi for the best performance. Just know that five gigahertz Wi-Fi does have a limited range. So you wanna keep these cameras probably within about 100 feet of a Wi-Fi access point. And if you can get it in the same room, all the better. Now what I'm gonna do here is click on my access point and it's going to ask me for the password for that Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna type that one in and I'll show you what happens next. So that camera is now on my Wi-Fi and if you just took these out of the box like I did, you will likely have to go through a quick firmware update, which I am going to do right now. So we're gonna let that firmware update go through and when it is done, we will connect the iPad to it and see what we get. Now the firmware update is completed. I will click the connect button here and what this will do is establish a connection to the camera. And as you can see here, we're already getting some imagery up and we're also getting some audio bouncing, uh, which indicates that we're able to get video and audio from this camera into our iPad here. And now what I'm gonna do is repeat the process on the other two cameras. So we'll go here and click setup and we'll go back through the exact same process we did before. Now it might appear to be redundant to have to go through and reconnect to the Wi-Fi for each one of these cameras, but I think this is actually helpful because you might have two different access points that you want to connect to depending on where you are within your facility. So I think it's good to have to do a little bit of this up front to get everything configured the way you want it. So let me get these other two cameras set up and we'll come back and see what we have when we're done. Okay, so all of our cameras are connected now and we're also seeing them here on the iPad. And as you can see, I've got audio bouncing on all three. I'm gonna click on continue here. And now you can see I've got these camera boxes up and every time I tap on one of these boxes, the image over here changes. Now we're not currently streaming, but if we were, what would happen here is that every time I click on one of these boxes here, the camera angle would change and that is kind of the basics of live switching. And you can see we've got three distinct images here. Now, before we go upstairs and set this up in the kitchen, there are a few settings that you might want to change. The first thing you might notice is that by default, my image quality is 480p, and I wanna bump this up to 1080p to go to high definition. Now, of course, this is going to depend on your wireless network. If you are close to your AC Wi-Fi and these cameras are pretty much the only things on it, you should be fine at 1080p, but if you are in a challenging Wi-Fi environment, bumping up the resolution also bumps up the bit rate, which means that it might be harder to maintain the video coming into the iPad. Because remember, all three of these cameras will be sending their video simultaneously, even if your viewers are only seeing one of those cameras at a time but I'm pretty confident in my ability to deliver this quality. So I'm gonna go over here to camera input quality, and I'm gonna go up here to the 1080p option. There's a higher one, but I think this is probably the safest bet on my network based on how I'm going to set this up later. So I'm gonna click on this, and what this will result in after this setting takes effect are all of my cameras rebooting, but when they come back up, we'll be brought right back to the screen and we'll be at 
the higher resolution. So let's wait for the cameras to reboot. And after that's done, I'll show you a few more settings and then we'll head up to the kitchen. Okay, so we are back up and running here. And as you can see, we are now at 1080p and you'll also get a readout about how much bandwidth all three cameras are using to transmit their video feeds to the iPad. But so far it looks like everything is okay. But you'll notice that there's a good amount of latency here. So you saw me move my hand and then you saw my hand move on screen much later. And there is a way to adjust for the latency. If you go back to the settings menu here and go to video source latency. Now by default, it's going to be at standard, but we can go all the way down to ultra low, but the latency settings here will be impacted by your Wi-Fi. So if your Wi-Fi is weak or overloaded or too far from the cameras, you might see some video breaking up here when you reduce those latency settings. So you will have to kind of play around with some of this stuff, finding the best match between your Wi-Fi access point location and your cameras and the latency setting. But I'm gonna to go to ultra low here just because I have a really good connection down here. I'm gonna back out, it will reboot the cameras again, but when they come back up, I believe we will have a much lower latency rate here. So now the cameras are back up on screen and you can see although it's not immediate, it's a lot better than it was before. And so far it looks like I don't have anything breaking up here as I switch around to different cameras and move my hand around. So we've got that settled. One other thing you might want to do is rename your cameras because right now they're just running with the default name and I might want to have a camera labeled for each activity that will be going on in my kitchen. So I'm going to go over here to uh, the settings and go to Mevo settings and I'm just going to change the uh, camera name here to talent so I know that this camera will be fixed on the person speaking in the kitchen and I can organize things a little better there. So we got that going. Now, the last thing I want to adjust is the audio because by default, all of the camera's microphones are coming in and getting mixed together, but I just wanna have the talent microphone be the active one. So I'm just gonna go here and hit the mute icon on the other two cameras. And now you can see the talent camera is the only one up and running. What you could also do is lower the volume of some of the other ones. So if you're out in a sporting event or something and just want to get some crowd audio, you can locate that camera kind of away from where people are speaking and just pick up some of the natural sound and reduce the audio level there just to have that underlying natural sound going on. But for this use case, we're going to just eliminate that microphone. Last thing we're going to do is set up our live stream. Now you can stream to one source at a time. And what I thought I would do first is set up a YouTube stream. So let's go into those settings. All right, I'm gonna click on the live button now. And the first thing I'm gonna see is a warning because remember we adjusted those latency settings a little bit earlier. And this does put a strain on the Wi-Fi and the iPad. And it's possible that running at this low input latency might impact the quality of the stream. And this is a good opportunity to talk about why testing your live stream in the environment in which you will be streaming is really critical. So I don't recommend showing up an hour or two before the event to set up. I would actually get there a day or two ahead of time, get everything in the spot where it's going to be, and test, test, test to make sure that things are working as you expect. But I'm very confident in my uh, Wi-Fi connection here and my iPad, so I'm gonna click not now, but again, we're kind of in a laboratory environment here and there's nobody on my Wi-Fi at all at the moment. Now you're gonna see here, we have a couple of different options for destinations. So Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Vimeo, and Twitch are all set up here and we can connect to one and only one. Uh, for transmitting our stream out at the moment. But you also have an option for RTMP, and you can use this to connect to a service not listed here that supports the RTMP protocol. And of course, there are streaming aggregators that allow you to use this so you can stream out to multiple services simultaneously. What I'm gonna do though is go over here to YouTube. The other thing I'm gonna do is switch this over to 1080p because I do want higher quality video going out to my stream. So I'm gonna click done there. And now I'm gonna log into my YouTube channel and we're going to get a warning about this because it's going to connect up with my Google account. I'm gonna click continue, get logged in, and I'll show you what happens next. So I granted the Mevo app permission to my YouTube account and it pulled down one of the scheduled streams that I had set up earlier on my web browser through the YouTube studio. 
And what I can do here is actually create new events, which I'm going to do right now. So we're going to call this Mevo test. I'm going to set the privacy on this one to unlisted right now, just because we're going to be testing something out and I don't want my whole audience to see that. And then I can set a date and time in which this stream would take place. And if I was doing a public stream, it would notify my subscribers to let them know that we have a scheduled stream coming up. So I'm just going to set this for about right now and click save. And when I do that, it's going to communicate with YouTube and schedule that in. And now we've got this test ready to go. And when we're ready and set up upstairs in the kitchen, we can click go live here and begin the stream. So it looks like we've got everything we need at the moment to get our live stream going. So let me get these cameras set up upstairs and we'll do a quick test stream to see how all of this works in an actual kitchen environment. All right, so we are set up right now in my kitchen. And what you're looking at right now is the feed coming off the Mevo that I'm recording onto my iPad right next to me. And the audio that you're hearing is coming out of the camera that is about seven or eight feet away from me across the counter here. Now I've got a bunch of different camera angles and I'm gonna switch them in real time here. So I've got one looking at this cutting board and I have another hanging up over my stove, as you can see, pointing down. And because these cameras are uh, so lightweight, it's very easy to get them positioned in the right space. And I can very easily just switch around here between cameras. But one thing you might want to do is crop in some of these things because these cameras don't have a zoom built in, but you can control some of the angles and the cropping on the app. So let's switch over to my cutting board here and I want to get in just on the cutting board. So what I'm going to do is go over to the periods here and I'm going to go over to crop and zoom. And what I'm going to do is just kind of drag this window in like so just to narrow down the field of view. You'll lose a little bit of image quality here, but for streaming, it's not that big of a deal. And of course, now you can see that we're much closer uh, to my cutting board with less of the extra stuff around. And I'm gonna do the same thing here with the overhead shot of the stove. So we'll go over here to crop and zoom. I didn't get it angled perfectly here and it's still moving around a little bit. <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and crop that down and click done. And now I've got myself pretty much a live stream that I could be transmitting. So why don't we do that? I'm going to click on the live button here and we're going to ignore that warning that we had before. I'll click not now. I'll go over to YouTube and Mevo test is here. And that's what we set up a little bit earlier. And what I'm going to do now is click go live and that will connect up to my extras channel and start transmitting over to YouTube. So now we're on YouTube. And we're also recording locally to the iPad. And of course, in a future video, we'll look at recording all of the angles on the SD cards a little bit later. But I'll switch back to my other view here. I'll start working on my stuff and we can kind of transition going into the uh, pan here for cooking and then jump back over here. And then, of course, I can click the button and say hi to all of you as we're working our way through things. And we've got a very functional, low latency, multi-camera switching going on here. And we're able to send this all up to YouTube at the same time using nothing but three cameras and an iPad. And you could do this with a mobile phone as well out in the field. So a lot of flexibility here. And as you saw, it's pretty easy to get this set up and running. There is a lot more depth to this, though, which we'll cover in future videos. But I think you can get an idea as to the sorts of things you can do with these cameras. And the visual quality is pretty good out of these. You can see the image that you're looking at right now is just room lighting from here. I don't have any special lighting set up. It's just coming uh, in with uh, whatever light we have in the room. So they're very good at just automatically picking what works best. But there's a lot of manual settings that you can do to adjust the image quality to get the look that you're after here. But as you can see, very simple to get up and running. And we'll be covering more of this in a bunch of other videos we'll be doing over the next couple of weeks. So definitely stay tuned for that. And I'd love to hear things that you would like to see me try out with these down in the comments section. And we'll be back with more in the very near future. I want to thank Logitech for their support of the channel. Please thank them also down in the comment stream. And we'll be back with more of what you can do with Mevos coming up very soon. And there's a lot more to see. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman.